We are with Craig Hazen. Craig is the director of the apologetics program at uh, Biola University. More importantly, for this program, he has his doctorate in comparative religions. Now, Craig, I read your bio, and I know that you got your doctorate of comparative religions, not at some fancy schmancy seminary, but you got it at the University of California in Santa Barbara. Is that because you liked uh, the beach, or was there a particular reason you chose that institution? Uh, my wife was very pleased I chose Santa Barbara as opposed <laughs> to someplace in Iowa. But clearly, th there was something there that you just can't get at a seminary. Got an opportunity to study some of the great religious traditions from stem to stern, really from, from great scholars in the tradition and from people who are on the ground, like devotees, people in the movements who knew what it was all about and who knew what it meant to them. Well, that's a very secular institution. I know they have a very diverse religious faculty. Did you find that it was a little bit hostile toward Christianity, too? Uh, in some respects, it was fairly hostile, as you would expect any uh, secular institution, towards any sort of conservative form of religious belief. But Christianity had a special mark on it for them. Well, earlier in our program, we were talking about religious pluralism and how some people think that it doesn't matter which path you, you're on to find God, just so long as you reach the top of the mountain. Is that, is that a true kind of belief? Is there anything to that? Uh, <laughs> clearly, there is a path to God. But do, they, do all roads lead there? Uh, probably not. In fact, I'm convinced that Christianity stands out among the world religions. It's something odd. It's almost an oddity when you consider uh, religion. Craig, yeah. this is a show about okay. Christianity. We're promoting Christianity, <laughs> not running it down. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Okay, odd. Let me, let me qualify Odd that. in a good yeah. sense. Odd, odd in, in a good way. Sense. That's right. Bizarre. How's that? No, that's okay. not any good. Christianity stands out from among the other traditions. Uh, when, when you think of religion, People, a certain image comes to mind, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, Christianity sort of breaks that mold. In fact, Christianity would fare a lot better if we were to retool the idea of religion. Well, what do you mean? Uh, how does it stand out different than a traditional religion? Well, let, let, me, let me pick one of the bigger items that I learned in my doctoral work. Christianity, and this might need some explanation, is, is testable. That is, you can test Christianity to find out whether it's true or not. So that's good. That doesn't mean that the person becoming a Christian has to take a test. You're not saying that. No, no. Okay, because I wouldn't it's have not, passed. It's not, it right. does not grade on a curve even. But okay, give an example of what that means, that it's testable. And why aren't other religions testable well, too? I mean, isn't all... Well, what comes to people's yeah. mind when they're thinking of religion, they're thinking of, uh, well, it's all, it's all that takes place inside of me or things that we can't know. Christianity is strange. In fact, one of the strangest passages in all of religious literature, I think, is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I think it's verses 12 through 19. The Apostle Paul, twice in these sets of verses, says, if, if, uh, he says that if Christianity is true, Jesus would have had to come back from the dead. That is, uh, if Jesus did not come back from the dead, Christianity is false. In other words, it's testable in that you can test it by means of checking out this historical event called so, the resurrection. So he's setting it up that if the resurrection didn't take place, then Christianity is not true. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. I mean, on he, one... he hung Christianity by a wow. thread in some respects. So it's, better, it's pretty important that the resurrection is true Oh my then. goodness, it, okay. it sure is. But notice how that sets Christianity apart in that it's testable because yeah. fair-minded people can look at the evidence for the resurrection. Okay. They can look at the evidence against the resurrection. Okay. Are there other ways in which Christianity is different from uh, the other world religions? Oh, you know, I think one of the most important things, and I think this will resonate with people who are sort of religious seekers. I mean, if you're looking for a religion, you want, you want a religious view that matches the way the world really is. Yeah. In fact, hold this microphone up to you. Okay. All right, here it is. Here, here's a set of beliefs, mm -hmm. and here is... Uh, the way the world is. You want those to match. Right? You want those to come together uh, in perfect harmony. And I believe Christianity is the only religion in the world that paints the proper picture of the world. Well, give me a world. specific example, because other than your two hands, yeah. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> well, I thought that would do it for you. I really did. Um, is there a religion, for example, that if you, if you really believed what the religion taught, you couldn't really operate in the world the way it is? Yeah, you couldn't make sense of the world. Okay. Let's take Buddhism, for example, okay. one of my Which areas of study. Which is very popular yeah. uh, among it, it, especially very intellectual people. Yeah. It's Zen, and you can get right. your mind around the... Okay. Yeah, it's That's growing it. in America okay. Okay. by leaps and bounds. Uh, 
How do you deal with the problem of evil and pain and suffering in the world? We all know that, it, that it's out there. We all experience it. But what does the Buddhist have to say about that? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, all the Buddhist can do is call pain, suffering, and evil an illusion. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. No such thing. That's right. Now, I think that's a weak view of the world. I really do. I think in Christianity, on the other hand, we, we, we can identify pain. We can identify suffering. We can see evil in action. And we have a God who will set all things right one day. We, we can identify the problem. We acknowledge it's there. And we have a God who will solve it one day. Hmm. Well, what about the God of Christianity? Is the God of Christianity different than the God of other religions? Hey, that's a great question. Because don't people say... Well, the God of Islam and the God of Judaism and the God of... They're all the same. We're praying to the same God. I mean, we get those yeah. questions all the time, don't we? But people just say, well, we just call him by different names. Yeah, but he's the same guy. Okay. Are they different? Yeah. Uh, the Bible's clear on this, uh, that there's only one God. All right. Now, if the Bible's right, the others are wrong. And it's clear that the God of the Bible is different in... in dramatic respects than, say, the God of Islam or the, the gods of Native American religions. Uh, there are clear and compelling differences. Uh, for instance, uh, the God of Christianity is a God of grace. He's a God of forgiveness. Uh, in Christianity, to present the, the message of God, we use persuasion, not military action. Big difference between Islam and Christianity. Nothing really current about that illustration, is there? But, I mean, I think it's, and oftentimes religions are perceived in a certain way through the popular culture or the media. Christianity kind of gets a bad rap. I mean, what is it with, we're the only religion that seems to get this label, you're so intolerant and God is sending people to hell, when in fact, uh, you know, it's, yes, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life, but everybody is, it, it, you know, qualifies, right? There's no pre-qualification that says, well, you can become a, you know, a member of this religion. You can't. That, that's kind of unique, isn't it? You know, there's a, there's a root to that whole problem. And the root is, can we really know a religion to be true? Mm -hmm. You see, that's the real problem. It's a problem of knowledge. In Christianity, we get to know that it's true and that's, objectively. That's unique. In a testable way. Yeah. You see, we can know it through the power of the Spirit revealing it to us, but we can also know it true through careful investigation of history. That thrusts Christianity apart from the rest of the traditions. And next week we're going to talk about the Bible and how you can trust and rely on the Bible. And that yeah. kind of ties in too, because sure the Bible is a reliable, historically accurate, holy book which you can't say about right. all the holy Oh, books. you can't say that about the Bhagavad Gita, for instance, yeah. or the, the Buddhist Tripitaka. Yeah. Now, those do not compare to the Bible in historical reliability. And plus, the Bible is so much easier to pronounce. <laughs> I like it for that reason alone. You know? <laughs> Craig, we may have a lot of people watching this show uh, that are brand new Christians, but we may have other people watching this program who are just checking Christianity out. And it would be natural for them to say, well, of course you're saying Christianity is true because you're a Christian. But what advice would you give to someone who's a seeker, who's saying, I've got all these, you know, religions to choose from. I'm going to start. Well, which one should I start with? Yeah, well, uh, the one thing you said was, yeah, Greg, you're saying it's true because, it, because you're a Christian. Uh, I'm saying it's true whether I'm a Christian or not. It's objectively true. Any fair-minded person can check it out and discover it to be true. Okay. That's a great, a great caution. Yeah. So as we as Christians are talking about our faith in Christ, what we need to say is that upon an examination of the evidence, I have found Christianity to be true rather than acting like we're standing at some uh, religious buffet walking down the line and saying, well, I'll pass the bowl of Buddhism and I'll have this plate of That's Christianity. Right. That's yeah. right. Hey, Craig, just in the, in the few uh, minute or two we have left, could you maybe share with our viewers and, and think about someone who's just received Christ. Maybe they have some uh, even doubts already about did they make the right decision. Give them some assurance from your standpoint, not just as a scholar, but a person who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, that they have made the best possible decision, not just for now, but for eternity. You bet. Uh, it turns out, and this is going to startle many people out there, that this is true that all the evidence in the known cosmos, in the known universe, points to the truth of Christianity. I'd take that to the bank. And I've had the rare opportunity to study all the great traditions uh, sort of in their original mix around the world. And so uh, I say this with some authority, but don't take it from me. Check it out for yourself. Christianity is checkoutable. You can mm -hmm. test it and know that it's true. 
Well, Craig, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, this has been great. I wish we had another whole show to devote to this, and uh, maybe we'll have you back again at, at some future date. But, uh, folks, this is really what it's all about. I mean, you haven't made a decision to accept Christ simply because it's a great idea or because it's something that you maybe need to do before you die, but because it's the truth. You have chosen by, by the grace of God and by the empowering of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus Christ into your life. And uh, you can trust that to be true, and we hope that you will take that as you grow in your Christian life.